Hello, fifth grade students and fifth grade families. Thanks for watching this video. This is a little different for us uh, doing our fifth grade parent night virtually. So uh, you'll have to forgive me a steep learning curve here as, uh, as I try to navigate the software and, and making this happen. So I really appreciate you taking some time uh, to learn more about our school. And my hope is, is that, uh, that this presentation helps you kind of uh, relax a little bit about the transition from fifth grade to sixth grade. I know that this looks different and that a lot of the things, you know, that you thought you might be doing as part of transition uh, aren't going to happen. But I, I want to let you know now, and I'm going to say it multiple times, we're still very much so uh, confident that we're going to be able to help you to have a really successful transition into the middle school. Even if we're not physically in school, it's still going to be really successful for you. So, so thank you very much. And I'm excited to be talking with you today. A little bit about me, uh, again, Michael Connor. I've been the principal here at the middle school for five years now. Uh, before that, I was uh, at Nature Hill Intermediate School in Oconomowoc for five years. So I I've been a middle school principal now for a decade. And I think that's important for you to know because like the rest of our staff at the middle school, I love being with kids at this age group. I think it's one of the most joyful uh, times in a student's uh, K-12 experience. And so I'm just really, really happy that I have this opportunity to work with kids at this age. Uh, I went to Purdue and, and to Madison. I was a math teacher uh, when I started, when I came out of Purdue. Um, and so I still have a real soft spot for, for our math and, and for our math folks. So some questions that I hope that this presentation helps you to answer, and I think it's gonna give you this information and more. Um, I wanna talk about just the logistics of sixth grade to give you an idea of what that might look like. Some of you might have older brothers and sisters, and so you may know a little bit more about the middle school. But for lots of you, this is your first experience in, uh, in the middle school. So I wanna just give you some of those logistical details that I think will help to ease your mind. We're gonna talk about technology. Uh, in this era that we're currently living through right now, technology um, and school, that has really elevated in importance. So I wanna let you know what you can anticipate having in sixth grade that's gonna look different than fifth grade. Transitions key. So I wanna share with you what our plans are right now of how we would like to transition you into, uh, into the middle school. And know that that's something that might be starting right now, but that's gonna continue on well into the fall as well. Transition isn't just one thing, it's lots and lots of things over a long period of time. So we're gonna uh, talk a little bit about what that can look like. Involvement is key, and so I wanna share with you some different ways that, that you both, both uh, our fifth grade students and our parents can get involved with the middle school. And then lastly, uh, especially if your parents uh, and this is your oldest child coming through, some, some strategies to support your child as they enter middle school and this really unique time of their development. So before we get too far into the, to the nuts and bolts, I wanna talk a little bit about middle school because it is such a unique and special time in a, in a child's journey. We are the shortest stop that they will make along this educational pathway. We're only three years, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at the middle school. But I would argue, and I often do with my high school and elementary school colleagues, that the middle school is the most important. We take uh, kids from being really you know, small children and needing lots and lots of support. And, we tr and over the course of three very short years, we move them on to be high schoolers that are largely independent and self-sufficient. So it's a really uh, important and huge transition, even though it's really short. And there are some different ways that we, we do that. We really focus on developing the whole child. We know that, that adolescent brain development is, brings with it some very unique features and we love it and, and we, we accept it. Um, we know we need to focus on academic skills, that that's really important that we give kids the tools that they'll need to be successful in high school and beyond. While we know that to be true, we also know that adolescence is this unique opportunity when students begin to develop uh, passions and interests and that they explore a lot of them as they're trying on all of these different hats of their identity and figuring out who, the, who they are. And so we wanna help promote that and support kids in exploring those passions, knowing well that many of those passions are dead ends for them. They might go out for basketball and that's the only time they ever play basketball in their whole career, or they go out for the musical and that's the only time they ever do that. But that's important. That's part of the identity development process is figuring out what you like and what you don't like. 
We also know that adolescence can be a really challenging time from a social emotional perspective. Identities are very fragile at this age, as are their, their social relationships with each other. And they're all trying to figure this out together at the same time. So we are really in tune with the unique uh, opportunities and challenges that come with those social relationships and that emotional development. So that's continually on the forefront of our mind as we're working with our kids here at the middle school. So how do we make this happen? A couple of different ways that we that we um, attend to the whole child. The first is this approach of a team of educators. In the elementary school, students largely had just one teacher that was responsible for most of their education. Here, because kids are switching to different teachers in different content areas, we really have this opportunity to team around our kids, to gather a, a group around them so that we can make sure that they're attended to in all of the different areas of their life. So we frequently meet and we have conversations about how to best support our kids. The curriculum at the middle school is extremely rich. And I know that our kids coming from the elementary schools have a very similar experience. The middle school, we begin to point kids outward to understand not only how does this learning affect me, but how might it help me to impact the world around me? So I'm really proud of the curriculum that we have here to offer your kids in, in both the, uh, the core areas as well as in the elective areas. Again, I talked about developmental appropriateness a little bit early. We understand that kids at this age are unique in their brain development. And there are things that are very different than when they were little kids uh, in elementary school. And so we really attend to that. We understand that we need to help teach kids uh, how to organize and manage themselves and manage their time and advocate and navigate complex social situations. So we really try to tune in to this unique developmental level, as well as the difference that comes with, with gender and cultural background. So we try to you know, weave all of these things together and make a really quality experience. And I'm very proud of the work that our staff does here in, in attending to these needs. So let's talk about the school day. What does the school day actually look like? What does this mean in practice? So let's talk for a second about what uh, your core academic classes are. At the middle school, we're on a block schedule. So as a sixth grader, you'll have three 87 minute classes. Every day you'll have English language arts, which will look very similar to the model that's used at the elementary school where reading, writing, speaking, and listening are a part of every single day. Our math curriculum is really focused on developing not only the skills of mathematics, but the thinking habits and dispositions of mathematics. Uh, and that you'll have every day for 87 minutes. Your third core will be science and social studies. You'll have one teacher that will teach both of those subjects and you'll alternate back and forth um, within the course, over the course of the year, you'll alternate back and forth between units and science and units and social studies. When we can, we try to bring those two worlds together as well as with the worlds of ELA. So you'll notice a lot of reading, writing, speaking, and listening that are happening in science and social studies. We wanna teach you how to think and reason and read and research like scientists and social scientists. Before we go much further, I think this is a great opportunity for you to meet some of your core teachers next year. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Lichione. I will be one of your social studies science teachers next year. Can't wait to meet you. I uh, hope you have a great rest of this year and summer and get ready to love the middle school because I know you will. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Arlene. I'm gonna be math teachers in the sixth grade and I really look forward to meeting you and uh, keep on solving. Hi, this is Mrs. Justman. I am another sixth grade math teacher. I am so excited to get you guys into our classroom. Um, so we'll see you in the fall. Be there or be squared. Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Clausen. I teach math and science and social studies. Uh, and hopefully you're lucky enough to get me two times in the day. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Quisenberry and I'll be one of your sixth grade science and social studies teachers. I'm really looking forward to meet everyone and looking forward to teach you a little bit of chemistry and a little bit of cavemen. Hi, fifth graders. I am Mrs. Kanias and I'm one of the ELA teachers. I'm excited to meet you and look forward to having some great conversations about text. 
Hi, my name is Miss O'Leary and I teach English language arts and science and social studies. I'm really excited to meet the 2020-2021 sixth grade students as we launch our year in English language arts with a community building unit where we have selected some really great uh, literature to help us build that community in our classroom. And in social studies, we start with a mini unit where we are social scientist detectives trying to uncover a mystery of some artifacts that were left behind. So we have really great curriculum planned for you and can't wait to get your smiling faces in our classrooms. Thanks, core teachers. Fifth graders, you'll get a chance to meet all of your teachers uh, in, in the fall when we return. So beyond your core classes, you also have three exploratory classes uh, that we'll meet as well. One of, one of those periods will be reserved for what we call the wheel. And the wheel, are, it's a series of four classes that meet uh, every nine weeks. So you'll have digital business, health, art, and design and modeling. Those classes will meet, uh, some of you may start in art and you'll take that class for the first nine weeks and then you'll move on to health, for example, and take that class for nine weeks. Uh, and every student's schedule will be uh, unique in that respect. But one of those periods is reserved for the wheel. The second period is reserved for physical education and world language. Those classes meet every other day. So if you have PE on Monday, you'll have uh, Spanish, for example, on Tuesday. At this point in time, all of you should have signed up for uh, a world language, either French, German, or Spanish, and we'll be enrolling in, uh, you in those classes uh, so you'll be ready to go in the fall. The third period of the day is reserved uh, for music. Most students are enrolled in either band, choir, or orchestra, or a combination. Some students take band and choir, and they would, they would alternate every other day. Again, you, you've already submitted your submissions for that, so we're working on building a schedule for you with those classes in place. If, uh, if you are taking music, and this will be the first time if you're taking uh, either band or orchestra and you've never played an instrument before, I would encourage you to reach out to either Mr. Peterson, our orchestra teacher, or Mr. Carson, our band teacher. They can give you some recommendations for some lessons that you could take over the summer so you're feeling more prepared coming into sixth grade. Otherwise, I know many of you have already been in band and, and orchestra, uh, you know, in, in fifth grade. So you're, you're probably feeling ready to go. We do offer uh, a study hall that would meet every day uh, if students don't take music. And I put a couple asterisks here because we really um, don't recommend study hall for most kids. We find that because we're on a block schedule, most sixth graders are able to get their work done during the school day and don't require a study hall. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really important to explore those passions and interests in middle school, even if it's something that doesn't go anywhere in the long run. Uh, so we really encourage all sixth graders to enroll in music, but if that just doesn't seem like the right option, we do have that study hall available uh, for that small number of kids. So if you're hearing that and, you're, and you, maybe you signed up for that study hall and you're, and you're changing your mind, we can absolutely make that change. Just send me an email and let me know, and I'd be happy to adjust that for your schedule for the fall. Uh, it's additionally worth noting that students in study hall will need to take one quarter of general music, as it is a legal requirement that all sixth grade students take music. So those are the classes that you have. Um, and before we take a look at how they fit together in the day, let's take a minute to meet the specials teachers as well. I'm Ed Indorf, and I teach physical education at the middle school. I look forward to seeing you all in the gym and teaching you more about your fitness. Hey everyone, this is Mr. Trask. I'm the other uh, PE teacher at the middle school. Can't wait to have you join our middle school next year. Hello everybody. My name is Mr. Danaher. I teach physical education and health education. I can't wait to meet everybody next year. Looking forward to a great school year. Hola estudiantes, me llamo Senora Tyler. This is Mrs. Tyler. I'm one of the Spanish teachers at the middle school. I'm looking forward to a great year next year. Bonjour tout le monde. Ici c'est Madame Kenwood. J'enseigne le français au collège. Hello everyone. I'm Madame Kenwood and I teach French at the middle school and I look forward to exploring exploring French language and culture with you next year. Au revoir. Uh, hello fifth grade students. My name is Frau Schulte. 
if you decided to learn German as a world language at the middle school next year, I will be uh, your German teacher. I am from Germany and I look forward to sharing uh, the language and culture of my native country with you. I also teach all levels of German at the Whitefish Bay High School. The common. Hi, fifth grade. I'm Mrs. Jansen. I teach uh, digital business. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you next year and teaching you all of the wonderful things about business. Hi, fifth graders. My name is Miss Doherty and I teach art. So that means when I meet you, we're going to get messy together. Can't wait to see you next year. Hello, fifth graders. I'm Mr. Carson, the middle school band director. I can't wait to make music with my band students. We're going to have so much fun. Looking forward to seeing you. Hello, everyone. My name is Mrs. Hammond and I teach vocal music or choir at the middle school. I look forward to meeting you and making music together next year. Hi, my name is Mr. Peterson. I am the middle school high school orchestra teacher and i am really excited to be making music with you next year thank you to the special squad let's take a look at how all of your classes fit together during the course of the day this multi-colored chart uh while seemingly difficult to to understand will begin to make a lot of sense to you as, as we go through our uh our experience together in the fall so the school day starts at 805 and your first quarter then is 8.05 to 9.34. We don't have a traditional homeroom in the middle school, but your core one class really uh, serves that purpose. That's where you'll hear the announcements in the morning. If you ever need to uh, bring anything in or like when we have a food drive, you'll bring it to your core one class. So that first class of the day really serves as your, as your homeroom. Your first two classes are back to back then core one and core two. So for example, you might start the day in math core one and then go right away to science and social studies core two. Lunch comes after core two. So at, at 11.07 every day. And then after lunch, we have core three. So you have all of your core academic classes in the first part of the day. So you're, you're kind of done with those core academic classes at 107. Then your specials classes fall at the end of the day. Uh, so for example, you might have uh, PE and German during special one. You might then go to your art class. Maybe that's the first wheel class that you have uh, in September. And then special three uh, could be your band class. Then you might end the day with your music. Everybody's class order is going to be different and you travel with different kids throughout the course of the day. So you might have a uh, one friend in your core one class and then a different friend in your core two class. So it's that that feeling of greater independence that comes with middle school as you mix in with more kids throughout the course of the day. When we talk about transition in a little bit, we'll talk more about how we help you to navigate this schedule, uh, especially in the opening weeks of the of the school year. There are a couple other key times during the day. So before school, uh, you're, the doors don't open until 7.55 in the morning. So as a sixth grader, you'll gather in the green space. So that's the grassy area on the east side of the middle, of the middle school. I'll be out there every morning uh, and we have some other staff members that are out there for supervision in the morning. We really don't encourage students to arrive uh, before 7.40. That's when our supervision starts during the day. And then we're, we're supervising outside from 7.40 to 7.55. But class then starts at 8.05. So you have 10 minutes, which is a ton of time to get in the building, to put your, put your things in your locker, to grab your materials, do some socializing with friends, and to get to class in time. Uh, so it, it's definitely an ample amount of time in the morning. Lunch is 30 minutes every day. One of the questions I always get is if it's multi, if there's multiple grade levels. And the answer is no. Uh, lunch is just sixth graders. And we've got plenty of room down in the lunchroom. We've got microwaves down there. I always encourage families, uh, you know, most of our kids bring their own lunch. There are a small, small number of items available for sale uh, at, so at the, uh, at the lunchroom. It isn't something that's a, a formal hot lunch program, though. So I always tell families, it's good for a just-in-case scenario of, of, oh, shoot, I forgot my lunch today. Here's $5. Grab yourself a slice of pizza. Um, but most students don't make you make advan take advantage of that every day. Most students bring a, bring a lunch. 
So we'd encourage you to do that. And then we still have recess in the middle school. So uh, you'll be able to eat your lunch and go outside if you want to. Um, so you get some fresh air and some activity during the course of the day. Some students do choose to go to the library, which is a, which is a great option for a, for a lot of kids. For some, the um, being in a space with 200 people, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And so we do offer a, a, a kind of an island of calm in the middle of the building for students who might just need a little bit more of a quiet, mellow um, lunch. We do have that option available as well. Lastly, at the end of the day, uh, at 3.20 when classes are over, uh, students again have another 10 minutes to grab their things and, and move on. Um, some students do have after school activities and so certainly they'll move on to those, but otherwise our supervision um, does end at 3.30, so uh, students are done there. We, uh, the Connects program at the elementary schools doesn't extend into the middle school, so there, is not, there isn't a, a before or after school care that we offer uh, at the middle school. Before we go uh, any further, uh, I would like to introduce you to uh, Ms. Khatib, our library media specialist, who's gonna tell you a little bit about uh, the technology that we have available to support your learning next year. Hi, future sixth grade families and students. My name is Ms. Khatib. I am the librarian and computer science teacher here at Toy Fish Bay Middle School. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the technology tools available to your students, but mostly we're going to focus on the Chromebooks uh, that every sixth grader will get. This is our um, third year of Chromebook rollout. So that means next year we'll have Chromebooks for every student in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, not only do we have Chromebooks available to our students, but in the library you'll find tools like embroidery machines and um, Spiro robots and iPads and all kinds of things to create and innovate with. Okay. We chose to go one-to-one -one a couple years ago uh, for a few reasons. One, so that students can really explore and innovate and uh, follow that path of inquiry when they find something that interests them. It allows us to write and revise and give feedback in a really timely manner. Um, it allows students to collaborate in a very seamless way with their peers, um, whether they're sitting right next to them or they're in other classes working together on a project. Uh, and it also allows for that communication to go between students and teachers really seamlessly um, and students and students really seamlessly. And then it, last year, we really explored that getting expert feedback. So seventh grade, our seventh grade team did a podcast and the students reached out to experts in the field. Those were like bee experts and experts on global warming and um, polar bears, and they were able to find those people, interview them, and record a podcast. Um, it was all really because we had the flexibility of Chromebooks for every student. <clears throat> um, some practical benefits for teaching and learning. Constant online access. Um, it just allows for more flexibility in our teaching. It allows students to um, personalize their learning for themselves. So if they're reading an article that really interests them, but the vocabulary is just a little bit up, they can have the text read to them. They can easily look up definitions. Um, it's really a fantastic tool for this differentiation for our students. Um, but you won't always be on a Chromebook in class. Uh, we'll be taught, students will be taught the, their expectations that first week of school before they even re receive their devices. And some of the big responsibilities are bring your device to school charged every single day. Um, we don't want students charging their Chromebooks at school, so once that charger goes home with them, it stays home. Find a spot in the house that works for you that you can charge it at night, and then remember to bring it with you every day charged. Make sure you follow your teacher's expectations expectations for use. So sometimes, like I said before, you won't be on your Chromebooks. Um, we do a lot of writing, and we do a lot of reading, and we do a lot of on hands-on activities and exploring that don't use the Chromebooks, which I think is a really good balance. Um, and the device is for your Google account school-related purposes. The point of the Chromebook is for school. That's why we're giving it to you from school. Uh, it's no cost to families, but there is this optional $20 a year warranty that covers accidental damage. And I would, I, I can't say you have to get it, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you get it. Um, it's just so much easier when an accident happens to just have it taken care of if you bought that warranty. If you don't buy that warranty, it can take a lot longer. We don't know cost right away. Um, and I have found that the most responsible students sometimes have little accidents where they're falling off desks or uh, one student dropped in a snowbank. I really encourage you to get that warranty. Uh, the internet is filtered at school and off campus. We use something called Securely. 
And our handbook provides more detailed information about that. Um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to email me. Again, my name is Brittany Khatib. I'm the librarian and computer science teacher, and we look forward to having you. So let's talk next about involvement. Middle school is such a great opportunity to enjoy and explore any interest or passion that you might have. And our staff tries to offer up as many opportunities as we can for our kids. So let's talk about what that might look like. Clubs and activities start in sixth grade and then they expand even further throughout seventh and eighth grade. We really recommend, especially at the beginning of the year, that students find something that they can join and be a part of. The activities that you see listed here are uh, activities that are more formalized. These meet before or after school. So for example, men, men's choir, women's choir, jazz band, those meet once a week before school. Students who are looking for an opportunity to you know, extend their learning in music, this is a great place for them to be able to do that. Things like uh, ski club and musical crew, those happen later in the year uh, as well. But, but the beginning of the year, right away, we start with, with green team, some of our book clubs. Um, there are opportunities right away from, from the get-go. One of the greatest places for kids who wanna get involved right away to start would be with athletics. And to talk more about that, I'm gonna kick it over to Mr. Danaher, who is one of our PE teachers, but who is also our athletic director here at the middle school. Hello parents and incoming sixth graders. Welcome to Whitefish Bay Middle School. My name is Mr. Danaher. I teach physical education and health education here at the middle school. I also coordinate all of the athletics here at the middle school. Athletics are a great way for you to get involved as a sixth grader. If you are interested in participation this next year, we have two opportunities for you. Your first opportunity is cross country. Cross country is a fall sport. It meets every day after school. We start right at the beginning of the school year and we run until about the middle of October. Students can participate in four to seven meets per year. All you need is a positive attitude, a pair of running shoes, and a willingness to participate with a big group. If you are interested in wrestling, wrestling begins uh, the beginning of November, runs through the middle of January. Again, there are four to six meets. Sometimes you have multiple matches per meet. They train every day after school during the season. All you need there is uh, an interest to learn wrestling, a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. It is open to all sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. Some common questions that we get, how do I get involved? Well, the easiest way to get involved is to send me an email and I will connect you with the appropriate coach or person that coordinates the events. Um, you will need a physical on file, you will need a concussion form on file, and you will need to pay your $70 activity fee. The two forms are found in your family access account and should be uploaded directly to that account. Teams practice generally every day after school. Their events are scheduled throughout the entire season. A full calendar is available once the season begins. Students transport to events uh, by school bus and are brought home on a school bus. Parents have an option to bring them home uh, as well on their own. Many times students say, well, I don't know anything about this sport or I'm not sure if I should try it. Middle school sports is all about trying something new. You don't need any experience. You need an interest in the sport. You need a willingness to try. You probably will fail a little bit and you'll try again and find success. And that's really what we strive for here at the middle school. So how do I get involved? Well, you'll see my email here on the screen. You certainly can send me an email. Pay attention once you get to school for announcements. Many times we announce organizational meetings or times that you can meet with coaches. Um, and those are the best two ways to get involved. Again, you will need your physical on file. You will need a concussion form and you will need to pay the $70 fee. Once all of that is in, you can begin your season. If you have any questions, please email me. We look forward to seeing you and hope that you join athletics. Have a great day. Thanks, Pat. So what about parents? How might you get involved here at the middle school? 
a couple of things I'd ask you to think about. The first is our, our PTO. We have a very active PTO. Uh, it's a PTO that looks different than uh, the ones at the elementary school, but have been very successful here over the past few years. That Our PTO was instrumental in launching and initiating the redesign of our library, our library media center, and working with the Whitefish Bay Educational Foundation to completely renovate that space. Without our PTO, that project would have never gotten off the ground. There's always uh, lots of leadership opportunities that exist there. If you're interested, I'd be happy to put you in contact with, with the PTO now, or there will be a sign up in the fall. Uh, we do have a number of field trips and other events that happen throughout the course of the year. Um, our sixth grade goes on, on several field trips, uh, seventh grade camp, um, things of that nature that are great opportunities to get involved. Overall, I have to say, involvement looks different than it does in the elementary school. As you might know, if you have older children, as kids get into middle school, you know, they start to resist a little bit more of mom and dad being involved. That doesn't mean that you pull away by any means. It just means it, it, it pivots. The room parent idea, for example, doesn't really translate into the middle school level. So we work differently to keep parents involved and engaged. And, and being a part of things like PTO, for example, keeps you involved with what's happening with school and your, in your child's life, but maybe just looks a little bit different than it did uh, at the elementary level. So we still definitely uh, want you involved. Let's talk about transition. As I mentioned earlier, transition is going to have to look different this year uh, because of, of, the, uh, of the pandemic, but we still have a lot of really important events planned that I think are going to help. So some of those transition activities include obviously this parent orientation video, and I hope that the information here is, is helpful. Also, in the, the body of this email, you're going to find uh, a link to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one um, meeting with you, with you and your child's counselor. So it's divided by the, uh, your child's last name. So please do sign up for that where you'll be able to uh, get your individual questions answered with one of our counselors. Towards a little closer towards summer, uh, probably late May or early June, we plan to have a, a Q and A session with some of our current sixth grade students. Obviously it'll be virtual. It'll probably be a Google Hangout where, uh, where I'll be present as well as uh, some of our other staff, but with some of our current sixth grade kids so that uh, your child could log in to that hangout and that they could uh, get some of their questions answered. Typically, we would bring our, our current sixth graders to Richards and to Cumberland to answer those questions, but, but obviously that's uh, not gonna work this year. But this virtual session should be really helpful. August will be a good time to come in, um, obviously for registration, but that will also be an opportunity to get into the building, find your locker and things like that. The bulk of our transition work really happens once school begins. Even before the quarantine, our staff really attends to those transition weeks and month, knowing that our sixth graders, it, it takes some time to get acclimated to that new environment. So we walk the building, we walk through kids' schedules, we make sure that they know where, where all of their classes are located. We work on lunch and making sure everybody has somebody to sit with during lunchtime. So we, we spend lots and lots of time and, and even sat, set aside academic expectations for that first week of, of the school year. Meet the Teachers is September 10th, uh, and that's an opportunity for parents to come in and to walk your child's schedule and to be able to meet all of their teachers in person. Uh, and then parent-teacher conferences in, in late October, another time to have more in-depth conversations about, about your child. There may be more things we add to this to help with the transition. Uh, for right now, this is the list we have, and I think these will be really helpful opportunities to help, to help uh, you and, and your child feel more comfortable at the middle school. One of the big parts of our Lion Pride activities, excuse me, of our transition activities are helping kids understand Lion Pride. So for us, that means perseverance, respect, responsibility, and integrity demonstrated every day. These are the commitments and virtues that we have um, as an entire school family. So we'll do a lot of teaching in those opening weeks around what are those expected middle school behaviors and, and what do we, what does it look like here? Much of what kids have done in the elementary school will continue to apply, but we want to make sure that they understand what those uh, responsible behaviors look like here at the middle school. 
just like what you experience at your elementary level, we do use a system where we where we acknowledge and reward positive behavior and we reteach behaviors when we don't quite meet those expectations. Uh, and you'll be informed of those uh, through, through uh, some digital tools that we have. So what can you do to make sure that your child has a successful support? You know now the transition activities, but how might you, especially if this is your first child, how might you support and ensure that they have a successful transition? So I wanna offer a couple of things. First, in those opening weeks, those are really critical uh, days for ensuring a successful start to the school year. So I would suggest asking some of these questions and then remain, remaining very curious and open-minded with wherever your child is at and being willing to ask these questions several times because it's likely that the answers are gonna change throughout the course of those first few weeks. But you might want to inquire, you know, who did you sit with at lunch today? That might give you some indication of their social engagements and if they have people they're connected with in those first couple weeks. Likewise, what do they do at recess? That might give you another idea of their social engagement. We really want to hold a growth mindset for our kids. And so asking them, what was something that was hard today? And then how did you figure that out? Promoting agency and independence is incredibly important for adolescents. So encouraging them and hope, we, we want them to find things that are hard. We wanna find things that are challenging to them. That might be academically, but it's very likely to be socially as well. And then asking kids how they problem solved and figured that out will give you a really good insight into, into their, um, their ability uh, to persevere in the face of difficulty. Who did you meet today? It's easy for kids uh, to stay with their peers from their elementary school. But by asking that question, you start planting the seeds of, of some expectations that you want them to get out of their typical friend group and meet some new people that they wouldn't have before. So asking, who'd you meet today? And asking that over and over again over the course of those first few weeks is a good way to promote those relationships. Likewise, who did you help? Adolescents, developmentally, with where their brains are at, they do have this time of turning inwards and being very concerned about self. And that's not a criticism. That's just a developmental reality for them, right? And so asking them who they helped continued to, to push them outside of their own world to think about how they might support those other kids around them. I think the more we can question and probe our kids and keep that dialogue open, uh, the stronger that relationship will be. And, and, and maybe they won't tell you right away, but they'll tell you eventually. And as they do that, if that you hear anything that uh, is concerning to you or you're not really sure what to do with or, or it gives you some concern, that would be a great opportunity to reach out to us. We want to help and we're happy to do that. So never hesitate to reach out to, um, to our administrative team, to our student services team, especially in those first few weeks during the transition, if there's anything that's giving you a little pause or, or reason for concern. As kids move on um, and out of those first few weeks and then they really dive into middle school, here's some, here's some strategies that we have heard have been successful with parents. The first is just keeping in mind that their experience is very different than the ones that, that, that you and I had when we were growing up and going through middle school. Technology obviously has changed a, a lot of that, um, but also in terms of what schooling itself looks like, it, it's just very different. And so keeping an open mind about what that experience is and being really, really curious about it. It's important to ask a lot of questions and that might kind of annoy your children at some point in time. But, uh, Curiosity um, is, is important. And I think, you know, asking questions like the ones that I just shared or, you know, just kind of always being in that curious, non-judgmental non um, position really helps adolescent kids to open up and to share more with you. We are a community of readers and it's absolutely critically important that your child continues to read over the course of the summer. I know our fifth grade team does an incredible job of supporting and promoting literacy. So keeping that momentum going into middle school will ensure that your child starts in September uh, without that, that dreaded summer, summer um, slide. So if you need help, I know your fifth grade teachers would, would be happy to give your child some titles that they could be continuing to read over the summer. 
Again, in middle school, it's this step forward into independence. And one of the skills that we really try to foster for kids is, is self-advocacy, understanding what it is that they need, and then, and then taking steps to get that. And so having that conversation with a teacher, if you don't understand how to, how to, to do your math homework, or having that conversation with a teacher, if you, if you didn't do well on a quiz, and you really want to take the opportunity to make it up or to redo it because you know you can do better. Uh, likewise, in the social realm, if a student is having some difficulty with a peer, making sure that they're, they're going to somebody and asking for some help, going to a counselor and letting them know, hey, this person is not being very nice to me right now, and I just need some help to figure this out. That's our encouragement, and we really want to grow those skills over the course of 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. So you'll often hear from me if, if you reach out to me with a question or concern. Um, I will oftentimes ask some questions to follow up around, you know, has, has your child had a conversation with that person or with that teacher yet? Have you had a conversation with that person or teacher yet? Continuing to promote self-advocacy is something that we really value and we think is important. With that comes struggle. We hope it is our job to ensure that students experience struggle and moments of failure in middle school. Not permanent failure, not long-term failure, but moments where they don't do something well so that we can be there and support them when they need to get back up and figure out how to move forward. Struggle is productive and struggle is important. Uh, we won't have done our job if we send our kids off to high school and they've never had to struggle. Um, then the stakes are higher there. And so we're really gonna try to promote struggle here we don't want anybody, you know, burning out and, 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 and crashing, but we do try to try to uh, supportive struggle for our kids as we move along. So think about, you know, how might you promote that? And, and certainly if you're seeing that your child isn't encountering any struggles, we want to know about it. But also if you need if you need um, some help in teaching them some of those skills, we'd be happy to, to, to support you there, too. Middle school can be risky and there's lots of opportunities for risk. And there's po obviously positive risk taking is what we're what we're supporting. And what do I mean by that? Uh, going out for the musical when you're kind of a shy person that's a huge risk for kids. And so we want to support that. We want to we want to push uh, the edge for each kid in a way that makes sense for them. We don't want anybody taking any wild you know wild risks or dangerous risks. But certainly that positive risk taking is an important element for all kids to experience. And so we hope that they. Uh, that they are able to do that um, in sixth grade and, and, and certainly beyond. The last part is it, it can be tough with adolescents to keep that communication open between parents and students. And, and we recognize that. Sometimes it means taking a, a back door and, and, and communicating with them a little bit differently than what you have as they were growing up, but doing everything in your power to keep that line, those lines of communication open so that, uh, so that if anything does come up, that they're willing and, and ready to come to you. So the last piece of advice that I, that I want to give before we close up this presentation is that there's a lot going on in the world right now. There's certainly a lot going on in your child's educational life and, and with everyone's family. I promise you, we will take good care of your children when they come to us in the fall. I know that we will. And even though this transition has been different, than years past, we will be even more vigilant in ensuring that their transition is successful in the fall. So for now, do the things I've articulated in this email in terms of setting up a conference and, and uh, with the counselor. And you know, as we know the dates for the Q&A session with our current sixth graders, we'll let you know. But otherwise, don't worry too much about sixth grade at the moment. Really focus on, on, on the health, wellness, and safety of your family at this point in time. We'll, we'll be ready in the fall for you. As always, I am ready and, and willing to answer any questions that you have. Feel free to send me an email and I will help in any way that I can. And I look forward to meeting you in person uh, when we get back together again in the fall. Thanks everyone, take care and be well.